What's the most common sentence uttered by investors? I wish I had said it earlier. I see it in so many comments and it always makes me a bit sad because to type that up possibly multiple times on other money channels as well as mine means one thing, living with a sense of regret. And so today's video is for those of you who think of investing and most often than not say, I wish I had started earlier. Hi, welcome to All The Honeys, I'm Marta and it's great to have you here. Both the London and New York stock exchanges were officially created over two centuries ago. That's over two generations ago, which technically means that no matter what age you are right now in 2022, you could have started investing on the day you were born. And even if you cut yourself some slack, let's say a century, you're still faced with over a hundred years left. A tricky position to find yourself in when in search for your excuse. And yet most of us, and here I don't need to say people in this or that age bracket because the simple truth present in all age groups do not start investing early. Less than 5% of British adults have a stocks and shares ISA. Sure, we can optimistically suspect that a higher percentage invest somehow in general accounts, in crypto wallets and so on. But even so, how will that group boost the overall number? By another 5, 10%? That's hardly impressive. But, but we see younger and younger people letting us know that they're planning to retire at the age of 40 or comment how they only 17 and sharing their investment strategy. This is a true story. I do get comments like that. And then we think, damn, I wish I had started earlier. We immediately fall into the vortex of comparison. And if this is exactly what happens to you when you're confronted with what I call the bold and the beautiful of personal finance, try this approach instead. Understand your place in time. Just because you like comparing yourself so much, try comparing your teenage years to those of an average contemporary teenager. Focus on one thing, mobile phones. When did you get your first mobile phone? I got mine when I was finishing my secondary school. It was this Finnish beauty, no pun intended. Apart from calling and texting, both with very limited free allowance, in times of boredom I used to mainly play a basic game called Snake. Shoutouts to all of you who played and remember Snake. I won't exaggerate if I tell you that I spend a maximum an hour a day on my phone. I spend less than that, but let's be gracious to my younger self. In comparison, if I were a teenager now, between 13 and 18 years old. To be precise, I'd spent on average three times that amount of time only on social media. And this involves WhatsApp, so you could point out it's similar to texting. But even when you single out one app, TikTok, and a group of teenagers aged between 12 and 15, the average use in 2021, so only last year, was 97 minutes per day. That's just one up. And that is a lot. Now, you're probably scratching your head and thinking, okay, where is she going with this? Does she want to blame today's kids for their social media use? Well, not really. I'm showing you how small my circle of peers was when I was growing up. Texts and calls were to and from people I already knew, or maybe if I were highly sociable from people who knew people I knew. There was no option to send a direct message to pretty much anybody who had access to Instagram because Instagram didn't exist. To illustrate this simply, chances of me stumbling on Minesweeper on my PC, very high. Chances of me stumbling on a personal finance TikToker talking about investing, none. Now you might be thinking, why does it matter? There was this interesting conversation between some of you, my viewers, under this video. One person, a teacher, 
said that people often cry. I wish they taught me this at school. Whereas in fact, compounding is taught at school. But kids don't pay attention. Somebody disagreed, somebody added something else and so on and so forth. You can go and read the whole chat if you wish. It's quite interesting. The point is this. Our peers have much more influence on us than our parents and teachers. Who will you believe more? Your dad who tells you not to smoke because it's bad for you? Or your friends who offer you a cigarette at a party? By the way, I'm not promoting smoking. It's crucial to understand the times you grew up in. Your access to, if not services, then certainly information. Think about it. What difference does it make that Vanguard was founded in 1975 if A. Nobody in your circle talked about it and B. Your first local internet cafe opened in 1990. And if knowing this still doesn't give you a more healthy perspective, maybe knowing that many professional traders on Wall Street didn't catch up with the idea of investing in index funds for decades either, and they very much had access to the information you didn't, will treat it as a failure, not regret. Now that you placed your younger self in time, you have two options. Regret that you didn't start investing earlier or accept it as a failure. Failure has a bad rep. Nobody seems to like it. You can hear that it's simply a miss before an eventual hit and part of a journey, but hearing it is one thing, but believing it is another. So why do I promote it today when you wish you had started investing earlier? because it gives you a sense of closure. When you regret something, you keep the what could have happened thinking on loop in your head. What if I had started investing earlier when I was 18? What if I had bought Amazon shares as soon as they came out? On and on it goes. A far better thing to do is tell yourself, okay, I didn't start investing when I was 18. I didn't by Amazon shares, I played Snake on my phone. It was a failure and I'm ready to move on from it. Regret is an open what if. It's a question. Failure is a type of an answer. Don't judge yourself. Don't look for somebody else, hey teachers, or something else to blame. It happened. Let yourself experience all negative feelings that show up when you face it. So whatever they are, disappointment, sadness, frustration, name them all, then add it all up as a failure, a lesson in disguise and plan the next step. Forgive yourself and move on. Forgiveness is very often associated with high drama talk shows, but it's a very quiet thing and it takes time. What helps is knowing that you did not have certain opportunities and chances that maybe you were not ready and that failure is a part of life. This channel is not a pity party. So we are who we are, we like who we are. And so we are keen on showing compassion to ourselves. The thing is, you do not have another go. You cannot travel in time and tell your teenage self to pay attention in class. What you can do is remember yourself from that time with affection. And it applies to all stages of your life. Maybe you failed to start investing in your 30s, maybe a year ago, maybe when your close friend was begging you to open an ISA, or maybe you even failed at each and every one of these occasions. Accept it. You failed. If you're watching this part of this video, I assume that eventually, at some point, you actually did start your investing journey, which essentially means you learn from your mistakes. Only you know how much courage, discipline and fighting risk aversion it took you. So congratulate yourself, you've arrived. And finally, look around and see how easy it is to start investing these days. No phone calls to a broker, no problem with finding relevant information. All it takes is a well-formulated question typed into a search engine. Isn't that incredible? No minimum amounts of money you need to save before you can start investing. No need to even 
own a personal computer if you're okay with using your phone only. Instead of wishing this had happened sooner, embrace the opportunities, take advantage of them, because the time is now. Use it.